Please tell me how you feel. Yeah. Like a beautiful. I don't want to tell you that you plan to come back now. Uh. <laughs> so, um, I think space is very crowded. <laughs>
it was different. <laughs> but still can't get over how huge this, this aircraft is and uh, uh, you know, loads of space to mess around in, so really fantastic. Uh, and uh, yeah, what can I say, it's always fantastic to fly, I'd do it again. I, um, I really recognise that mm. the control mechanisms for movement are fundamentally different if you do them in a certain way. I think it's nice, I mean, you kind of get the impression that not an awful lot of um, second generation Caribbean kids or Caribbean British kids of working class origin have the opportunity to do this sort of thing. So I feel kind of, um, maybe not privileged but lucky to be here. Um, I can't say I'm represented for the class, but for the race of the whistle, well, yeah. yeah. Us yeah. being children of NASA, to quite yeah. agree yeah. how that differs, as well as um, how the poetics of space flight differs from our own kind of um, yeah. sci-fi stroke kind of Futurist line of take. That's what, again. That's why I'm really, really, really interested in yeah. the interface between the history of Russian cosmism and Afrofuturism as we know. I mean, how that kind of touches on everything from sunrise to all. In the 50s, it was a shock that Russians launched the first Sputnik and uh, the first man in, in, in space. And in the Russian case, it was in quite another ideology. It was a um, re really religious, artistic, and philosophical motivation behind it. As a schoolboy, I was 11. I remember that our lesson in school was interrupted, and the teacher told us, you should hear the announcement on the radio. And the radio announced that the first man in open space, Yuri Gagarin, was just launched. It was quite an event. There is, there is a cosmonaut inside who is trained, the train for the manual control of the um, entry, re-entry. Yeah. He's going through the... He's going through the entry yeah. training procedure. Yeah, yeah. 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 And he's done quite a how it's happening. All he's done is he's done this kind of thing. Oh my god! And then you realize, it's not the grand, it's you going like that. Just the message but you're not doing anything. No, it's not your will, it's not even your muscles. It's just, it's just the whole nature of the space has totally changed. It's very, very bizarre. And you feel kind of high. Like, physically high and sensationally, perceptually, phenomeno phenomenologically high. Because you're like, your whole blood is tingling, your skin is tingling. Your face is like flushed, your eyes are like wide open. You're like, you're going like, like this. Like rapture, like the physical experience of rapture. Yeah, it's very intense. And then it's all over, and then the whole build up of the theatrical, it begins all over again. I'm just going to talk over the credits there. Um, we've got a few people who were on these flights um, that we just showed that edit of with us tonight, including Kevin Fong. I'm afraid to say the French editor on that film cut out the best bit of his joke. Um, and uh, his, his joke was, um, it's, always, it's always good to fly, but perhaps not again um, this afternoon. And, um, <laughs> So I always want to re-edit that, that, that particular thing. I'm Rob Lafrenet, I'm the curator of the Arts Catalyst. And um, Claudia, I just wondered if...